My name is George Haley, and uh, I began working at uh, Samyuk uh, Tehak, Samyuk uh, University now we call it. At that time it was uh, Green Union College. And at that time there were probably about 200 students, uh, consisting mostly of uh, theology, and they, we did have a home economics and agriculture program there, but it was very small. And as I say, only 200 students. And uh, I, my job was to work in the farm and the dairy. They called me the industrial superintendent or supervisor. And uh, we had at that time 12 cows. And uh, as I recall, yeah, there was 12 cows. And during the first two years that I was there, those 12 cows had 18 calves. 16 of which were bull calves. Uh, this does not increase your herd very rapidly when uh, <laughs> most of the calves are bull calves because you sell those out for beef and they're gone. <clears throat> so we thought, really, we need to do something different to uh, help these cows to have uh, heifer calves or we need to, to buy some more cows. And to buy cattle in Korea, good milk cows, was very expensive. It was hard to find good, good dairy cattle in Korea. So we had, made, we had thought we need to make some plans to uh, import some cattle from the States. But also, we had this uh, small uh, milk processing plant where we pasteurized the milk. It was very crude uh, equipment. A uh, double-boiled jacket, in which we heated the water and uh, pasteurized the milk and put it in glass bottles and delivered to uh, residents in the Seoul area, uh, other missionaries and uh, businessmen and so forth that lived in Seoul. Uh, Koreans at that time did not use milk very much at all. So our customers at that time, uh, the 300 quarts of milk pretty much went to uh, foreigners that were living there. And uh, we needed to upgrade our uh, processing equipment, so someone suggested that we write to uh, Beatrice Foods to see if they would uh, help supply some uh, up upgraded equipment, uh, pasteurizer and uh, cooler and those kinds of things that we needed for the milk plant. And I wrote to uh, Mr. Carnes, who was president of the Beatrice Foods at the time in Chicago, and I didn't hear anything for quite some time. And then one day when we went into the union compound, I got our mail and I had this letter from Mr. Carnes. And uh, he said, uh, said something like, uh, I'm really sorry that it took me so long to uh, reply to your uh, request, but we do have, we found the equipment that you're interested in. And uh, how would you like us to send it? Well, I was quite enthused, very ecstatic actually because uh, they were donating this equipment. All we had to do was pay the shipping. So I was very happy about that. And uh, this was about the time that we were going to go on furlough to the, come to the, to the States and, uh, in 63. And uh, so while we were here on furlough in the States, why the equipment came there, and I was writing letters, trying to uh, raise money, get donations to uh, get the cows that, we, cows that we wanted. So I was writing letters to try and raise money to uh, get the cattle and uh, didn't get much of any response. And while I was going to school up at uh, Lansing, I got a letter one day from someone and he said that he would donate money for seven cows. Well, we were hoping to get 20, so this was a good start. And then just before I finished school up there, I got a postcard from uh, a friend of ours out in California, and she said that she had some money and some of her friends would help. And so I thought, well, this is where I was going to start, go to California and uh, see if I could get the cattle from uh, La Sierra or Loma Linda. And I took... Uh, my wife down to Ohio to stay with her mom while I did this running around. Uh, and she stayed down there with the kids. And I, I took the train to California. And uh, 
got to La Sierra just at a perfect time. They were uh, consolidating their herd of cattle with uh, Loma Linda. Uh, actually, Loma Linda was uh, getting rid of theirs and transferring all over to La Sierra. And so we had the pick of uh, the cows that we wanted out of the 300 that they had, we were able to pick the ones that we would like to choose. And uh, we had money for the cattle and uh, someone had donated money for some equipment that we needed to get. And things were doing fine. Uh, but the cows were in California, not in Korea. And we had to figure how we were gonna do that. It was, we'd run out of money by that time. And so when I was staying with uh, the doctor and Mrs. Steele, Madeline Johnston's uh, parents, and uh, we were talking one day about, well, the Lord led us thus far, but we run out of money. I wonder how we're gonna get, them, get everything shipped over there. And uh, Mrs. Steele and I were in church one day and two rows in front of us, we saw Elder Sorensen, who was a Far Eastern Division president. And we thought, ha, ah, we'll talk to him. So we told him we wanted to talk to him that evening. We went to his apartment and uh, talked to him. And he talked to the uh, treasurer who happened to be here on uh, some meetings in the States. And uh, they agreed to pay the shipping bill and charge it to the school later and we could pay it off over time. So that solved our problem. So we uh, took the cows up to uh, the last port of uh, departure, which was San Francisco. We had to track, truck them up there. And uh, then that was about a three week trip from San Francisco to uh, uh, Busan, Korea. And they had to stay in quarantine there for 10 days. And I was very thankful that they, these were bred heifers, so I didn't have to milk them, and they didn't have any calves <laughs> on the way over there, which would have been a real problem for me. But all I had to do was clean the pens out and feed them. Uh, clean the pens out every once a week, and uh, so I cleaned them out three times, and then I had to feed the cows. And they, they took the uh, ship ride pretty well, first day out or so they weren't very hungry because I guess they were getting used to their sea legs but otherwise why it was fine and like I say after we got to Pusan this one uh, heifer she had a calf it was a heifer calf so that was a good start and uh, the uh, herdsman was there and he took care of it uh, and then afterwards we uh, put the cows on a train and took them up to Seoul. And uh, the uh, station, train station was about a mile from the college. So the cows had to walk from that train station to the college. This was probably the most uh, uncomfortable part of their trip because they didn't want to walk. And we had to tie a rope on them behind the tractor and uh, encourage them and some of them were sliding their feet. They really didn't want to walk there, but anyway, we got them up to the college. So this uh, added uh, 20 cows to the 12 that we already had, and uh, they started having heifer calves, which increased the herd. And uh, so shortly, instead of 300 quarts of milk a day, we were selling 1,200 quarts of milk a day, and that greatly increased our uh, production and uh, helped uh, financially as far as the school. And uh, over the next few years, in uh, 73 and 77, I took uh, another plane load of 60 cows in 73, and in 77 I took two more plane loads of 60. So a total of 200 that I took to, uh, uh, from the States uh, and uh, that really helped us. And uh, by the time they had the maximum production, I'd say uh, we probably were selling about 50,000 quarts of milk a day. 
And this was able to provide about 50% or more of the operating capital for the college and helped it to grow and build the new buildings and all of the things that were necessary to help the college grow. And so at this point, the uh, uh, college and today in 2015, uh, Samyuk University has about a little over 6,000 students one of the biggest uh, universities that we have in our Adventist denomination. So that's, uh, and it's very, doing very well. And uh, we, I'm just glad that we had a small part in helping this to grow.